Hi guys, it's Nathan from Geometry Gym here and today I'm just going to go through some of the recent enhancements we've made to uh, our eTabs and SAP plugins for Rhino and Grasshopper. Uh, new enhancements that enable uh, for the concrete design um, of columns and beams to be automated uh, within Rhino and Grasshopper via triggering uh, design capabilities within within eTabs and and SAP. So the first thing you'll notice if you go to the structural analysis tab of the geometry gym structural analysis tab uh, there's a new panel uh, in both eTabs and SAP uh, called eTabs Verify and this uh, houses all the components uh, that relate to the design um, aspects of uh, that are available, I guess, in, in eTabs and SAP. Uh, the, the two components up the top here, the concrete frame design and the eTabs uh, steel design, basically are similar to the solver components if you've used these in the past. Um, and what these do is automate the triggering of the analysis solver within eTabs, as well as the concrete or steel design um, functions in, in eTabs and then start to retrieve the results uh, from those programs uh, which relate to the, the, the geometric structural analysis model that you've, that you've set up um, within Grasshopper and, and, and Rhino. There are a number of enhancements we've, we've made um, to enable this concrete design which we'll start to go through um, in a little bit more detail as we look at this script. So I won't go through this script in minute detail, but it is fairly simple and it gives you, a, 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 I guess, a quick idea on how you can start to generate um, a building in Grasshopper and Rhino. If you've seen a couple of the previous videos I've done on this type of stuff, it, it will be a similar, um, a similar process. So I've, I've basically set up a, a series um, component here which generates a, a series of um, elevation numbers, um, with a slider basically telling me how many levels I want um, with a floor to floor height. Um, I've used the create grid axis, the eTabs create grid axis system here to help me generate um, a simple rectangular uh, grid system. This is a fairly new component uh, which can be found under the eTabs element um, panel. But it just allows me to um, quickly generate a grid system with with a number of uh, x number of grids uh, and a I guess a uh, a series of um, x coordinate values and then same thing in the y direction. And what this component outputs is is a is a bunch of grid curves, which then you can start to use these to generate your uh, intersection points for column locations, um, as well as uh, do some manipulation such as joining the curves, uh, which, which allow me to then um, extract um, edge curves um, to generate, I guess, edge beams uh, around the perimeter of the building. So once I have the uh, the base, uh, I guess, um, information, I can start to translate that geometry um, via the elevation vectors to get, to start to, uh, to build up the building. So this, uh, this building is pretty simple. It's got a series of um, internal beams uh, as well as edge beams, and then a series of columns that run the whole way up the building. It's just a simple um, example. So I'll take the uh, slab edge curves that I've generated um, for the ex for the extent, um, I guess, of the floor slab and create an area perimeter um, element using the create area, eTabs create area perimeter. And assign a, um, a create a slab property there um, and also assign the, the concrete material. So for this demonstration, uh, we're not going to do any design um, on the floor slab so this is just similar to uh, as we would um, typically set up um, a slab in the past. I, I, I'm using these slabs to then go and create um, groups and diaphragms um, at each level to 
set up a, a wind um, auto user load pattern. Um, this allows quite quick uh, wind, uh, wind loads to be applied to the building as well. This is a brand new feature um, that we've just implemented as well, uh, which allows you to set up these auto wind user patterns. So now under the loads uh, panel, you'll see um, the ability to set up these um, auto wind and auto seismic user load patterns, um, as well as set these up for code based um, uh, code based patterns as well. But I'm not going to go through this in, in detail. It's quite simple um, and you should be able to uh, use this script to, to understand what, um, what's going on here. So what I wanted to concentrate on now is some of the new features we've, um, we've enabled uh, to allow the, for the design to work. So in specifying concrete materials, we've added a new, the ability now to specify the um, compressive strength of a material uh, from within ETAB. So there's two types of ways that you can uh, specify a material in ETABs currently, and that's by using this ETAB standard um, concrete component. So if I just drag this out here, I can right click on the parameter import and select from um, a range of the standard uh, concrete grades for my specific code. Um, the other way which is now available is to set up a user defined material and that's what I've done here. So basically I've set up three, three different materials, all concrete, um, which have uh, different types of compressive strength. So um, if I now look at the output of this material component, I've got um, three concrete materials uh, with three different strengths. So what I can then do is start to pick which concrete material I want to use for, I guess, my con column elements or my uh, framing elements. So to enable us to, I guess, set up a concrete um, property, we've now enabled the ability to um, assign uh, concrete beam and concrete column um, frame properties as well. So specify um, reinforcement layouts for columns and, and reinforcement areas um, for concrete beams. Um, so this can be specified in, in under the um, frame property parameters. Um, and under the verify tab in eTabs, we've now basically this gives you um, this shows you where to find, I guess, these, these design section attributes. Um, so available for, for beam um, and column and column elements. So for simplicity here, I'm just assigning uh, this, the same concrete column uh, property with the same reinforcement um, attributes to, to every column. But you can do a similar thing to what I've done with the material and set up a whole bunch of concrete frame properties um, with different, uh, I guess, reinforcement ratios or reinforcement settings that you could apply um, along or you know up the building um, or whatever. And same thing with um, same thing with the beam properties as well. So you could um, generate basically as many frame prop basically as many beam types as you wanted with different reinforcements to, to start to, I guess, use this as a design base for your, for your concrete building. So once you assign this frame element, and you can see here, this is all the concrete um, columns which have been assigned. Uh, and I'm just wanting to, uh, I guess, create a group from uh, a structural group in ETABs of all these columns. What this, what this basically does is once you assign that group, it uh, tells ETABs that you, you'll perform design um, based on this group. Um, it, it'll automatically assign those groups to be designed once, once you assign that group. Um, just, just be wary of that. Now, what I wanna do is because I'm not that interested in, in all, in this instance, I'm not that interested in, in checking the ratios of every column that's being designed in ETABs. 
um, in this instance, I might just be, I might just care about the base columns because I want to design, um, I guess, my, my, my column based on that. So um, you can see here, it's spitting out, I guess, a, a branch of columns and these, these represent the columns at each level. So in terms of what I'm trying to do here is just retrieve that first branch, which is my base columns, as you can see. Um, and I want to generate a query um, and query basically the design summary um, of, of each of those columns. So um, under the verify tab, there's now a bunch of design query components. So I've got a concrete column design summary query component here, um, which is this component um, here. And I'm also doing a similar thing with the beams. Um, obviously the beams at every level, but every level is is similar. So all I want to do is query <coughs> the elements, say, on this third level. Now, if you've got a, a, a building which is varying, um, maybe levels three to eight are similar, what you can do is a similar thing here and, and start to only design um, the levels in which are, are similar. Um, same thing, I've got a query concrete beam design summary component. Uh, which will which will query um, ETABS once it's done the design for for those results. Okay, so once I've set up the queries that I want to do um, through the through the concrete design uh, process, I can I can go and um, bring this bring the design component onto the canvas to set up the um, analysis solver and, and design query process. So the main things that I need to um, input into this component are the design code in which I want to design um, the concrete elements to. So in, under the verify tab again, there's, um, there's a couple of different codes that you can choose from. At the moment, for concrete design, we've implemented the Euro code too. Um, but basically, any code that's available within ETABS um, that can be added here. So, if you're wanting to design in, to the New Zealand code, um, you just have to request that to us, and we can uh, we can add it. Um, there's a couple of others available for steel design um, currently available. What um, once you bring the code component. Uh, onto the canvas, you can just, you can wire that into the design code input. This will allow you to select, um, I guess, the different factors uh, that are associated with concrete design in, in, this, in these um, codes. It also allows you to set um, design overwrites as well. So you might have um, specific element type design overwrites, which you want to apply um, to the design process, such as um, effective lengths or um, or other types of code based um, uh, factors uh, that are element specific. Um, this allows you to also specify some different strength combinations um, and at the moment it will also trigger ETABS to create it, its own uh, design combinations as well. In this component, you can also set um, analysis result queries, what you can do for the solver component. So all of these solver um, queries, such as global reactions or um, no displacements, can also be queried um, through this component as well. But for now, I'm just gonna query the, the design results. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and run this um, solver and design procedure now and what this do what this will do is open e tabs analyze the structure uh, and then and then trigger the the concrete design procedure in e tabs as well okay so what that's done in um, e tabs is, is brought the building into e tabs it's run the analysis and then it's also completed the uh, concrete design. So you can see here, um, you've also got your utilization ratios as well on your concrete column. So I can click on a column here um, and obviously it's done the, de the detailed design um, or whatever. 
Um, I can go in under the define section properties and I can also see the um, reinforcement which has been um, provided in the column as well as the, um, the uh, material properties and stuff like that. So, and then as a part of that, the, these design results, which I've, uh, which I've queried prior, um, are now available uh, in, in here as well. So I can see um, what my, uh, I can see what my, um, I guess my critical load combination is. Um, I can see the area of reinforcement, um, which has been provided. Uh, I can have a look at my, my ratio. So obviously these, these um, the ratios of the base columns are, um, are, are overutilized. Um, and then I can, and then the same thing with, um, with beam. So I, at, at a number of locations along the beam, I can have a look at um, which combinations are critical and also the, the reinforcement areas um, which are provided um, as well as understanding what my minimum reinforcement requirements are along the beams um, and the required um, reinforcement along those beams as, as well. So this kind of, this allows you to start um, changing it or um, getting an understanding on how, if the geometry is changing, um, I can start to, I guess, get a reasonably quick feedback on um, how this is going to impact my design. So what I might do is quickly just up the concrete grade on the columns and that will that will re-trigger re that, that um, process to be um, completed. So that's rerun the analysis. That's rerun the analysis now. Um, I can go back to my, my outputs and I can now see that my um, my ratio is a little bit is with with it under one um, using that um, increased concrete strength. The other thing to look at um, is the error and warning summary. So this gives you this outputs any any warnings that um, come along with the design, uh, and you can see here that um, for some of these columns, it's telling me that um, it's overstressed. Now, um, this is because even though the ratio is below one, within the design code um, options, I've actually set a utilization factor limit um, of 0 0.75. So um, you, can, you can set that limit at, at one if you like, um, and, and you shouldn't get this, uh, this uh, warning. So thanks for listening uh, to this quick introduction on concrete design, automating concrete design um, within ETABS and SAP. Uh, do get in touch with us if you have any issues with this or if you want to get started. Um, you should be able to down, you'll be able to download this script uh, through a link in this video um, and do try it out. Uh, so th thanks again for watching.